In this episode, let's talk about three things. How indie artists earn their money, how do they copyright their music, and how they distribute that. If you will stick to the end of the video, you will get some kind of bonus, where I will show you the place where I go in order to get the inspirations for my new songs, and how much sometimes it can cost. I'm Sasha Amsinger, and this is Nate Tyranny Roadmap. But first of all, let's talk about copywriting. There are a lot of guides and tutorials on YouTube that will tell you how to copyright your music, lyrics, songs, or all together. So I'm not going to talk about this. I will tell you what resources help me to register my songs and how much it cost. Quick search on keywords copywriting your own music will result in hundreds of videos covering the topic. For me, the first guidance on copywriting that I received was from a video by Charles Klein, a singer and songwriter from Canada. In his channel, Charles talks about music production in home studios, and there is a ton of videos with his own songs as well. In his video on copywriting, Charles highlights the main steps in copywriting with the US-based copywriting organization. The first half of the video will give you the basic understanding of what copywriting is, while the second part will provide you with the step-by-step -step procedure. The video was created back in 2020, but it's still actual as almost nothing has changed since then. But I wanted to make sure that I understand the whole process. Here, my attention was drawn by Halle Graves, a musician and blogger from the US, and she actually created two videos. In the first video, she doesn't speculate on the definition of the copywriting. I already learned that from Charles. But she focuses on the step-by-step -step procedure of registering your own songs. In the second video, she answers some good questions, and I highly recommend to watch it as well before you start doing something. After following the steps that Hallie highlighted in her video, I actually managed to submit my uh, songs for copywriting, and in three weeks, I received an official letter of confirmation from the uh, US uh, Library of Congress. This document certifies that all my songs have been successfully registered, and now I had an official document that it serves as confirmation of this legal act. Speaking about how indie artists earn their money, the first thing that comes to my mind is music sales and live performances. And though this is fair enough, indie artists' income can vary significantly based on their success, niche, and revenue streams. While this is hard to come up with a definite percentage distribution for all indie artists, there are some common income sources that would apply to like an average indie artist. There are some common income sources and rough estimations for a successful independent artist. Let's have a look at those. Number one is music sales. It can be digital, physical, or vinyl, and it will build up 10 to 15 percent. Then goes streaming, which makes 20, 30 percent. After that goes live performances and touring, which builds up 25 to 35 percentage. Then goes option with merch sales, which adds 10 to 15 percent. Licensing for TV, movie, and ads will make approximately 10 to 15 percent crowdfunding. 5 to 10 and teaching and session work 5 to 10 percent. I will not talk about each of those income streams for independent artists, but I will rather highlight the one which will help you to clarify how their royalties are paid to uh, an independent artist. And with this, you will get the help from performance rights organizations or PROs. I'm not an expert in this question, that is why, as usual, I will share with you the sources that help me to settle this question. Looking for the answer to my question, what performance rights organization is, I came across a video produced by Ryan Wachek, a music producer and vlogger from the US who is the creator of the Indie Music Academy, a school for beginning artists. 
In Ryan's library, I identified three key videos that helped me later to register my PRO account. The first one is how to collect royalties from your music. You will get acquainted with the PRO definition and within six minutes video, Ryan kills the question and you will now have the full understanding of what PRO is. The second video is eight mistakes to avoid when registering a song with PRO. It is another seven minutes video where Ryan highlights the typical mistakes you may face while submitting your songs to your PRO. And the third one, how to register your song with BMI. For US-based uh, performance rights organization that is responsible for collecting your royalties, uh, not only in the US, but all around the world. After some reviews and consideration, I went with BMI as my PRO. The videos from Ryan helped me to erase any doubts that this is a good choice. Let's talk a little about the music distribution services. There are a lot of music distribution platforms that offer different services at different costs. There are tons of videos on YouTube uh, telling about each of the service and frankly, I spend lots of hours researching how actually uh, the distribution services work. In the description, you will find the links to the videos that uh, are really helpful in getting the clear and still simple picture of how the distribution process works. My choice was CD Baby and I signed up at once to CD Baby Pro which offers a number of services which take care of the following. All mechanical royalties from streaming services, all mechanical royalties from download strokes like iTunes, all publishing performance royalties from streaming services like Spotify, TV, radio, live performances, and global YouTube publishing royalties. Here I will make only one disclaimer that from the 7th of August 2023, CD Baby discontinued CD Baby Pro um, and they introduced uh, the kind of substitute to that product which is called CDB Boost, which uh, actually includes all those services that were part of uh, CD Baby Pro plus additional promotional services. After I registered my songs with CD Baby, I was requested a few times to validate all necessary information on each song, as later you didn't have a chance to change anything. It was about two weeks after the song's submission when I received the confirmation that my distribution campaign is good to go. On the 7th of July 2023, the Nate Tyranny debut album, The First, was released on Spotify, Apple Music and other music platforms. That was an exciting moment. So now, as promised, the bonus material. Any indie artist needs some inspiration for creating new music. Mine is hidden in the nature. I usually wake up early in the morning and to drive 30 minutes from my hometown. This is the place that gives me the possibility to meditate and experiment with my MIDI keyboard. At times I do just the sketches for the drums or some piano parts. I may even do some vocal parts as well. It's worth waking up early to catch the sunrise, see the horizon from the top of the cliff, and dive into the vibes of the next piece of art. And it costs nothing. Or almost nothing. While filming this episode with the drone, um, my good friend Anani actually lost the control of the drone. We were really frustrated while uh, spending the time to take this out. Anthony even was kind of risking his life to, to get it. Well, um, everything is fine. Anthony is alive, Drone is alive, and we are good to continue. This is where I spend my time while getting the inspiration for my new creative work. Um, and in the comments, please share how you get uh, inspired uh, while thinking about creating something new. Doesn't matter if it's music or not. See you in the next video. Bye for now.